Hey everyone, Vale here and today we're going over our top 12 champions to one trick in League of Legends as we head into the pre-season 12. Pre-season will give you plenty of time to learn or master a specific new champion and hopefully this video can help you out figure out which one you might want to give a proper go. One tricking a particular champion not only means that you understand the champion's abilities, combos and mechanics, but it also means you understand every single matchup, every single advanced trick and you know your damage at every point in the game in every situation. Becoming a master of one champion in particular means you can focus on winning the game rather than just learning all of the matchups. Every time you go into game you know exactly what to do in every situation and this will easily give you the upper hand in your games. So kicking off this list we have number 12 and that's going to be Fiora. If you've ever played against a fed Fiora or a Fiora one trick you'll already know just how crazy this champion is when played to her full potential. She is the queen of split pushing and she can pull off some unbelievable outplays on her own. Good Fiora players can get a lead in a lot of matchups by playing immensely aggressive and abusing her early damage auto attack and vital passive damage. Fiora one tricks have a tendency to go TP ignite and all in from as early as level 1 and there's not many champions that can out damage her early on which if you play aggressive enough translates into an early lead and then you can snowball that at an unfathomable pace. Aside from those early kills, Fiora's passive and ultimate allow her to really excel in scenarios where she's actually outnumbered. When you're aiming to carry from the top lane, you really need to be strong enough to punish not only your lane opponent, but the rest of the enemy team as well. By bringing other opposition to your lane and either wasting their time or killing them in the process is an amazing way to carry games. In the late game, there's not really many champions on the rift that can match Fiora's split push. Her ultimate is an insane dueling tool, and when you get ahead you can come out on top even in the most unlikeliest of circumstances. Fiora is definitely an enjoyable and impactful champion to master, so if you enjoy a bit of top lane dominance, this is the champion for you. In the number 11 spot, it's time to talk about one of the most fantastic long-term supports in the game, and that's going to be Thresh. So when Thresh came around, he basically revolutionised the way that supports can carry, and completely changed the game when it came to maining support, and for good reason too. Before this champion, support was mainly about healing and peeling for your carries and then Thresh came along and brought a whole new complex kit that can engage, pick and peel at the same time and have a ton of fun whilst doing it. One good Thresh hook can completely win a game of League on its own, so getting good at this champion and his abilities gives you the chance to actually make that game winning hook at any time. Whether it's in lane, getting your AD carry ahead, in the mid game leading to a dragon or a baron, or even in the late game when you just need to take out that one target to win the game. Thresh doesn't stop at just landing hooks though. The amount of incredible stuff you can do with his lantern is insane, especially when you have a really immobile carry who is struggling to stay alive in those tense teamfights. Clutch lanterns and well-timed flays can really make the difference, and the more practice you have on this champion, the more often you'll be able to pull these off. Thresh is impactful at all stages of the game, and when put in the right hands you can really see just how much use he can be. If you love playing support and haven't really given him a proper chance yet, now may be a good time to master this champion. Another amazing champion to one trick is actually the AD carry's worst nightmare, Rengar and he's going to be taking the number 10 spot. Back in the day this champion was arguably far more difficult to deal with than he is now. He's had a fair few changes over the years and he doesn't really get that much love compared to the insane popularity he had back in the earlier seasons of League of Legends. A large part of that is just how much the game has evolved and the infinite amount of champions and items that are more equipped to deal with him. However, this champion is still undeniably an incredible threat when played by the right person. Rengar has a ridiculous potential to snowball the game if he gets a few kills early on, and he can literally delete his foes in the blink of an eye. You can go full assassin, bruiser or even off tank and still deal some absolutely devastating damage and also be incredibly hard to shut down due to your survivability and your slippery kit. A fed Rengar is always going to be a problem, especially if your team lacks crowd control on peel which makes him an incredible pick later on in the champion select. Rengar's lane ganks are absolutely amazing. You can walk into a lane brush and jump out on top of your enemies and burst them down in an instant or lock them down with your root for an easy kill for your teammates. Once Rengar's 6, he's got the ability to gank anywhere from everywhere and when utilised by a Rengar master, can genuinely feel impossible to play against. Well performed one shot combos on Rengar are unreal. From deleting carries to darting in and out of fights, abusing his brush passive and his ferocity management, this champion is not easy and will genuinely take some time to get the hang of, but when you figure him out, oh boy does he become insanely fun. Number 9 on this list is going to go to Riven and I'm sure you were already expecting this one when you saw the title. Riven was actually one of the first champions in League of Legends to really deserve and grant that one trick status. She was really what set the tone for players who excelled at specific champions and several Riven one tricks actually made their way to the pro scene after people were in awe of the limits and mechanics that were proven possible. Riven is the OG animation cancelling character, combining her abilities with each other for extra burst, adding and weaving in auto attacks, items and summoner spells to overcome the most unforgiving circumstances. 
River mains can turn any poor situation into a win, and this is really what makes the difference with players who have mastered this champion. If you get good with her, you can pretty much 1v9. People will simply not be able to deal with you when you're ahead because of your ability to constantly dish out incredible damage, dodge every incoming ability, and kill everyone you come across. So whether it's in the lane phase, getting an early lead through abusing your champion's limits with aggressive gameplay, or even in team fights, flash QR comboing an entire team and getting a penta in the space of a second, this champion's potential is nuts. And if you enjoy playing someone flashy that can make the difference on their own, this is definitely the champion for you. Number eight on this list is going to Lee Sin. Arguably one of the most creative picks in the entire game, and being somewhat of a Lee Sin one trick myself, I could honestly talk about this champion forever, so I'll try and keep it short and sweet. Lee Sin's kit when he was released was heaps and bounds above so many other champions in the game. Not only was it super complex and versatile, but the amount of combos and mechanics you can abuse to outplay your opponents made him that much more insane. Players over the years have thought up their own versions of these combos and used and abused them even at the highest level and on the biggest stage. Lee Sin is definitely one of the most entertaining champions in the game to watch. Just the sheer amount of flexibility and creativity involved within his kit makes every game uniquely different, and due to the fact that Lee Sin is strongest in the early to mid game means you can get stuck in and hit the ground running right from the off. Lee Sin starts off by ganking and invading as much as he pleases, and then translating that lead into a monstrous mid game where he excels at making picks with his inset combos and catching people out and bursting them down in the blink of an eye. Lee Sin thrives in those mid-game teamfights where he can abuse his early game damage advantage and line up the opposition for a tasty 5-man kick. This champion's limits lie entirely in the player, and if you don't have much practice on him, he's often pretty useless. A Lee Sin Master, on the other hand, is one of the most scary things to face in the entire game. So number 7 is going to be given to Vayne. Now Vayne is an absolute monster, she's one of the strongest hyper carries in the game, and if you don't put her behind early, she's simply going to destroy everyone who tries to stop her. Half of being good at Vayne is discovering how to correctly play her in the lane phase and get through those poor matchups. If she's against some really oppressive long range champions, she can have a really difficult time. It's all about maximising your opportunities to punish them when they misplay and learning when and how to all in when you can. It's also incredibly important to optimise your CSing and your harassing alongside dodging incoming abilities with your tumble, which can be incredibly difficult to juggle all of these things at once. So when you get out of the lane phase though, or even just in the early levels, you can absolutely dominate these matchups, saving your tumble to dodge those important crowd controlling or high damaging abilities whilst continuously laying out insane damage with your silver bolts and auto attacks is key to playing this champion optimally. The best part about Vayne 1 tricks though is those late game team fights. You've got your damage items, your defensive items, and now it's time to put your mechanics to the test. Eye up every champion and every ability that can shut you down and dodging or negating those whilst dealing some incredible damage is honestly one of the funnest things in the game. Getting good at Vayne means you will become one of the flashiest players to watch, an amazing pick to show off to your pals and really demonstrate what you and this champion are capable of. Number six on this list is Zoe. Now I'm sure you've all probably faced a talented Zoe player on the Rift before and thought, what on earth is going on? She has about 12 flashes, loads of random items, a long range sleeping ability and a ton of crazy ranged burst. In lane, Zoe needs to juggle landing her abilities, farming and staying out of trouble which can be a task in itself, but this champion can always seem to find opportunities to burst her opponents out of nowhere. Outside of the lane phase and going into the mid game is where Zoe really becomes so hard to deal with. She is the queen at making picks and getting kills out of thin air, and if you get hit by that max range sleep, there's nothing you can do but watch as she blinks across the map and pops you back to the shopkeeper, by which time you'll probably have gotten to know quite well. Zoe is definitely one of those champions that needs some time invested into her. She's not someone many players can just first time, as her kit really requires getting some used to, but this champion's limits are up there with some of the craziest in the game. Her ability to turn impossible situations around and make them her own make her one of the scariest characters in the right hands. Number 5 we've got Bard and he is without a doubt one of the most fun supports to play in the game. He's so unique in the way that he plays. He has a very potent stun, which is pretty difficult to get the hang of. It requires some practice figuring out all the lineups and which walls you can abuse it on. His W is a little bit of sustain and healing with a cheeky movement speed boost, but then it's his E and his R which really set this champion heaps above the rest when it comes to creative use and outplay potential. Bard's magical journey allows him to gank from those random places and traverse the map in a matter of seconds. When you get used to this ability, the amount of stuff you can pull off is crazy. Not only can it be used to get around the map, set up ganks and roam like a god, but it's also an incredible escape and baiting tool. The best bards use this ability in all numbers of ways, and combining it with your Q and your R make it that much more impactful. Talking of bards R, his ultimate is yet another ability which has an unbelievable amount of uses. From saving teammates lives, setting up engages, preventing rift heralds from headbutting the turret, or even stalling objectives so you can get there and contest. This ability really has so many different ways to use it, and it all comes down to the person controlling him. 
When you combine all of Bard's kit and abilities, you get the most incredible design that really is possible of carrying any game. This champion requires a solid amount of practice to learn all the different ways to use and abuse him, but with the right person behind him, can be absolutely beastly. I bet you can't guess who number 4 is, of course you can, it's Jin. So obviously I'm going to explain in 4 ways just how great this champion is when he's one tricked. 1. Good Jin players can bully the living hell out of certain lanes with his crazy damage on his 4th Q bounce, his long range W being exceptional at following up or catching out enemies, his E laying traps around the floor to prevent ganks and self peel, and his ultimate laying 4 beastly shots down to catch escaping enemies or to contribute to fights elsewhere. 2. Jin one tricks can snowball insanely hard. If you get a few early kills on the lane phase you can walk into the mid game with some unbelievable damage and carry games pretty easily on your own. 3. When it comes to team fights, Jin has a pretty unique playstyle for a marksman and it takes some talent to pull it off regularly and consistently. Jin can either sit at range and pop his enemies with his WR and long range auto attacks, especially once you've got rapid fire cannon, or he can get stuck into the fight and flow around the rift with his inbuilt movement speed steroids around his ammo system. And number 4. Jin one tricks can pull off some ridiculous combos, especially with Gale Force. You can Gale Force W into Q and 4th shot, and this can lock down or simply burst out a squishy in a matter of seconds. There are a ton of cool tricks and combos you can pull off on this champion, so if you haven't already, get playing this guy and enjoy all the ways you can hard carry by yourself and do it in style. So we're nearly there now guys, and in number 3 we've got Kane. Now Kane has been pretty scary since he came about, because of so many different reasons, but one of the main reasons why Kane one tricks are so much more dominant than the average other Kane player is just understanding when and why to go down different build paths and which form to choose. Blue Kane is an insanely mobile one-shotting assassin capable of consistently deleting squishies from the map in an instant, and Red Kane is an oppressive, disruptive, self-healing, unkillable monster who just seems to never die. Both of these forms feel like completely different champions, so when you're one-tricking Kane, are you even technically a one-trick? Imagine learning all of the champion's builds, abilities, champion limits, damage tests, and all that goes with it, but actually having to do that with both Rust and Kane. This is why this is such an incredible champion to one-trick. The champion's ability to carry games is without question. He can fly around the map incredibly quickly with his traversal through walls, and he seems to be everywhere and anywhere whenever he likes. You think you're safe taking a dragon while he's top? Bam. Kane flies through the wall and smites away all of your hopes and dreams. Honestly, the amount of things this champion can do with his flexible kit and playstyle are just second to none. The champion's kit itself can be somewhat easy to understand, but the champion's limits and the ability to actually understand them and learn all of the different ways to play and build this champion depending on the situation is another thing altogether. Number 2 on the list is Kiana. Now if you've ever watched Bei Feng or any very high elo Kiana player, this won't actually need too much explaining. Kiana's kit and combos seem pretty, you know, relatively simple, but in terms of actually pulling them off, absolutely insane. The skill ceiling on this champion is definitely up there with some of the highest in the game, and this is what makes her so unbelievably fun to watch. Her QWQ combo combined with her ultimate and prowless claw make her combos incredibly fast, and even if you watch it all in slow motion, it's still hard to even comprehend what has just happened. In the early game, a good Kiana player has a very high kill threat from as early as level 2 or 3, and then if this champion starts snowballing, there's genuinely nothing you're going to be able to do about it. Good Kianas in the mid game will simply roll over teams with the sheer damage that this champion brings to the table, and also often become unkillable at the same time due to her crazy mobility and stealth mechanic in her brush element Q. The real Kiana masters abuse this stealth element and use it consistently to dart in and out of team fights without much chance of being killed. Go in, delete your opponents, use your stealth, wait for cooldowns, rinse and repeat. It doesn't really end there for Kiana though. Her ultimate is one of the most game changing abilities on the rift. And if you find the right area with the right setup, this ability can be absolutely devastating and easily enough to force an instant pentakill and surrender vote. This ability can be exceptionally hard to pull off due to it relying so much on terrain and specific scenarios, but when it works, especially with certain wombo combo teammates ultimates, it can end a game in a heartbeat. If you love high mobility champions, love characters with an insane skill ceiling, then this champion is definitely one to master. Now in the number one spot, we've got the barrel blasting, citrus slurping and parlaying pirate himself, Gangplank. The first thing we're going to talk about, which is definitely the most insane part of one tricking Gangplank, is his barrels. The possibilities are endless. The amount of damage that his barrels can do are unfathomable, but they're so hard to pull off. They're so big and obvious, and most of the time his enemies can just run away from them or just auto attack them to get rid. But a Gangplank one trick will not give his enemy the opportunity, and they will be popped and consumed within seconds, like the bottles of rum in his pantry. 
In the early game, Gangplank controls the lane with his Parley Poke, his W Sustain, and his barrels to zone and abuse his enemies and minion waves. His ultimate can also turn the tides of any team fight from across the map, or even prevent dive attempts on himself. If Gangplank gets an early kill or two, he becomes incredibly hard to deal with. If he gets rolling in the lane phase and piles up some CS and early kills, he will spike much earlier and become an absolute monster in the mid game. If Gangplank is strong in the mid game, he's absolutely going to abuse you in the late game where he really comes to fruition. If Gangplank pulls off a good barrel combo in the late game, he can genuinely get an instant pentakill. The damage this does is probably the highest in the whole game, but due to it being so hard to actually do, you really don't see it that often. Watching a true Gangplank Master in action is pure poetry. And if you haven't already, make sure you tune into a few of the top Gangplank players and see if you can pick up a few tricks in the process. This champion is truly the one trick master. That's going to wrap up our top 12 champions to one trick in League of Legends video. We really hope you enjoyed it and please leave us a comment below of who you love to one trick and why. There is tons of champions that are also amazing contenders for this list and it was so so hard to narrow it down to 12. If you feel like trying any of these champions then make sure you check out our short guides or advanced 5 tips videos to give yourself a head start. I've been your host Vale, and as always, take care.